it's occurred to me that some of the things I've been playing are actually a little mainstream, so here's a game that nobody cares about. No wonder I've only got 50 subscribers. Buying PC games in the 90s basically involved going to your local computer store and buying something random off the shelf. Sometimes it's worked out great, and sometimes you got weird adventure games that nobody else knows exists. Come to think of it, I bought a lot of random adventure games. I don't think I ever finished one without a guide though. Lighthouse, The Dark Being, was released in 1996 by Sierra, and has some pretty clear inspirations from the much more popular Myst series. This is another one of those titles that is no longer sold anywhere, and I was lucky just to get it working and playing mostly nice with a capture software. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to want to capture the mouse cursor, so I guess just use your imagination. The plot can be summed up pretty easily. Basically, your neighbor opens a portal to another dimension, and he and his daughter are kidnapped by the alien from Signs. To save them, you get to go pixel hunting and solve an endless supply of impossibly obtuse machinery puzzles, all while avoiding Vulture Man from Thundercats. Alright, I'm being a little mean. Despite needing a detailed guide to make any progress with this game, I was actually pretty enamored with it when I first played it. It all starts with a mysterious phone call. Hello, dear. It's your mother. Not that one. Hello, remember me, your editor? Not that one either. This is Jeremiah Creek. Something has happened. Something horrible. I have to leave immediately. I don't know how long I'll be gone. A Amanda is here at the lighthouse. I don't want to leave her alone. Please come right away. If you don't hear from me soon, it will mean that I have failed, and then... Oh God, I just can't think of that now. There is no time. I have no choice. Please, you're the only one who can help me. Come now. A pretty promising start, really. You play a faceless, nameless writer who drives a... What is this supposed to be, an Edsel? The lighthouse is probably one of the best parts of this whole adventure. It's got the spooky atmosphere, the story elements are interesting, the puzzles are actually solvable, and you're introduced to one of the best nannies of all time. At least we don't have to deal with that crying baby anymore. Dr. Crick has really disturbing taste in art, but his wife is gorgeous. I'm just gonna steal his knickknacks. Most of the story is delivered through his journal entries, and the voice acting and art are top notch. This is also where you find one of the game's best puzzles. This thing isn't exactly the room, but it is one of the few puzzle puzzles in the whole game, and you need to part from the other world to finish it. I do kind of wish I could just use a crowbar on it though. There are a few ways to proceed, and this is probably not the right one. No, you need to go pixel hunting and lever pulling to survive here. Your first stop in the other world is this deserted beach. I can see a tower. Through the mist. This is where the game drops the spooky vibe and goes for otherworldly. It's also where things branch off and you can just kind of go wherever you want. The tower belongs to One-Eyed Willy, and all his robotic friends have been turned against him. Believe it or not, this thing was actually intimidating in 1996. The birds have been corrupted by the Dark Being, the villain and general trickster of wherever we are. His motives remain unclear. From the tower, you can take a bat plane over to Lyril, the game's only a real character, and no, oh, where do I start with Lyril? I'm pretty sure the developers wanted you to feel bad for Lyril, as she's a paraplegic whose life support chair is apparently malfunctioning, as she now has a mechanical stutter. Also, all her friends are dead, and her only companion is that murderous clockwork birdman. Lyril, however, goes out of her way to be annoying. The problem is the way her dialogue is programmed. You click on her until her dialogue begins to repeat, but then when you attempt to back away, she says, Wait, there is mo more I could tell. Then she proceeds to give you more dialogue. This happens about a dozen times. I'm not saying they should have made a dialogue system for this one character, but there had to be a better way. 
Daryl gives you a little background history on the world and gets really mad if you try and check out her room. That door is none of your business. Somewhere between the Bird Tower and Leroy is where this game just starts to fall apart. It's a shame because this whole world just feels half-baked and I really want to get to know this place. It feels like the writers had this whole universe thought up and just forgot to tell us about it. Outside of Leroy's exposition and a few notes, you're told almost nothing about this place. Some locations only exist to give you a key item, and some puzzles do nothing but open up alternate routes to places you've already been. This is probably one of those adventure games you can beat in 10 minutes if you know exactly where to go. But then some parts are so good, like this submarine. Every part of this thing feels authentic. You have to power it up in the right order, adjust the ballast, start the engine, set the navigation. I love this thing. But then it can only take it to a few uninspired locations. Eventually, you'll come to the Dark Being's Volcano Lair, and this is where things go completely off the rails. Everything here is train tracks and misery, and I can't even pretend to like it. I carried this stupid umbrella the whole game, and it wasn't needed until here. Twice. Oh look, I found Amanda! Three decades of gaming, I believe this is the first time I've had a baby in my inventory. She's just chilling in there with some rocks, a hammer, an interdimensional super gun, all while I make a time bomb. Adventure games! So you capture the dark being and perform, I guess, electroshock therapy on Dr. Crick? Because as we all know, electroshock therapy is the best way to wake someone up. I don't I don't know what's happening anymore. In the end, these two live happily ever after, you've got a new souvenir, and Lyril is crying somewhere alone with Birdman, I don't know. I'm alone here, with no one to help me, no pretty stones for Lyril, nothing but tears, nothing but tears. Such an inspiring tale. Still better than this other ending I got. So yeah, I've got mixed feelings about this one. It starts out really strong and shows a lot of potential, but it just kind of falls apart halfway through. I think I'm gonna go play Riven now. Don't touch the machines! 